actually going to expand along IJK if you have other shortcuts. By all means, you can do that. It should all be equivalent. Like, I see a zero here in this case, and you can expand along this, maybe save yourself, you know, an element. But to keep it general, I'm going to do IJK, and if you do it along IJK here, you expand along here, things kind of line up nicely. So, I'm going to follow this plus minus plus pattern. We start with the upper left, and that's plus. Don't forget to alternate your signs if you do it anywhere else. And so I'm going to start with the I hat. And this is fun. So I'm going to cross out all of the elements that are in the same row or column. So like that. As the I, which is the first part. And you'll see that the only thing not orange is negative 1, 2, 3, 0. So it's a 2 by 2. Like so. And I'm doing it with highlighter because every time we move on to then another element, we start fresh. So it's not like this was permanently crossed out. So then I move to J, and I have a minus, so minus J hat. Same dealio. Cross out the elements in the same row, which is still my IJK, or the same column as the J part. So the only stuff that's not pink is 1, 2, 2, 0. Like... So, and then, same thing for K, we have a plus K, so it seems like a lot right now, but it'll just, with practice, you just do I, J, K, U, V, go, done. <laughs> so, but take your time here, so we have our K, cross out the same row, cross out the same column, and we're left with the only thing not green, one, negative one, two, three, like so. And so now we basically broke down the um, determinant of a 3x3 three three into a bunch of 2x2s, two which is actually easier to deal with. We basically just multiply the elements in this diagonal, so this way, this times this, minus this diagonal. So if it were A, B, C, D, it's A, D, minus B, C. So this minus this, this minus this. And following the order of operations, you always multiply first and then subtract or add or whatever else. So we'll just do that. We have our i hat times negative 1 times 0 is 0. Minus 2 times 3 is 6. Very nice. Minus j hat. 1 times 0 is 0. Minus 2 times 2 is 4. Very nice. Plus k hat. 1 times 3 is 3. Minus... Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Awesome. And now we just clean this up. So we have i at 0 minus 6 is negative 6 minus j at 0 minus 4 is negative 4 plus k at 3 minus minus th 2 is 3 plus 2. And you might remember that from algebra or you can just think of it as negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. So, either way, 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, so the minus minus becomes a plus. And now I'm going to just put the numbers in front. So, negative 6i, the negative j times negative 4 is plus 4j, plus 5k, at like this. And that's it. So, notice we have something i, plus or minus something j, plus or minus something k, at. And so we just plop these coefficients into our answer. So negative six comma four comma five is our cross product. So again to emphasize one times two is definitely not negative six, negative one times three is not four, and two times zero is not five. <laughs> so not just that. Um, and just really briefly for those of you who are not as familiar with the i hat, j hat, k hat um, notation here, basically the reason you can just take the coefficients is by the nature of the additive and multiplicative identity. So if I actually were to expand this out, the reason this is all just one vector, like it simplifies to this one vector, is because we have negative 6 times i is 100. Zero, zero. 
plus 4 times 0, comma, 1, comma, 0. Remember, these are pointing in the direction of x, y, and z. So if I were to expand this out, and I only really need to show this once, I think because the pattern will be pretty clear, I hope. Um, and you don't have to do this every time you write this out, but negative 6, when you multiply a vector by a constant number, you can distribute that. So negative 6 times 1 is negative 6, negative 6 times 0 is 0, 0, and then plus, and then 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 1 is 4, 0, and then plus, and then 0, comma, 0, comma, 5 times 1 is 5. So, the multiplicative identity is the 1, so 1 times anything is itself, so it just scoots in here, and then anything times 0 is 0, so it's just that number, 0, 0, and then 0, and then this number, 0, and then 0, 0, and then that number. And when you add vectors, you can add corresponding coordinates, remember, so not for multiplication, but yes for addition. So negative 6 plus 0 plus 0 is still negative 6, and the additive identity is 0, so anything plus 0 is itself, so you still have that negative 6. 0 plus 4 plus 0 is still the 4, 0 plus 0 plus 5 is still 5, and that's why these all get squished together into just this one vector. I hope that makes sense. It's because of 1 and 0 and the fact that i, j, and k point in the direction of x, y, and z. So, negative 6, 4, and 5 is our answer for the cross product. If we were to generalize u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, v3, you'll see this pattern. Basically, when we cross out the i part, we're crossing out the u1 and v1 parts, and we're finding the determinant of u2, v3, uh, v2, wait, u2, u3, v2, v3. And so you basically actually just get for this first part, for the i co uh, coefficient, you get u2 v3 minus u, u3 v2. It's hard to say, but minus u3 v2 and whatever that works out to be. So negative 1 times 0 minus, which is 0, minus 2 times 3 is 6, so 0 minus 6 is negative 6, which is that first coordinate, and you can generalize this for the other two as well. So there are little cute, like, shortcuts to memorizing the shortcut to memorizing the expressions that you can use to find the cross products if you like, but in my opinion, since you can derive it from this anyway, just generalize u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, v3, and do exactly what we did here. You don't have to memorize that, and you can just go ahead and find this determinant. And so really, it's just breaking it down here, and then calculating and simplifying, and that's it. You don't have to do all this stuff every time, because you'll know to just do the coefficients. So this is our answer. Ta-da! Negative 6, 4, 5. So we can kind of check this to see if we're on the right track. A cute little fun fact is that the cross product, you cross V, gives you a vector, and that vector is actually going to be or should be perpendicular to both U and the vector V. So U cross V should be perpendicular to U and V. So if I said, what is a vector that is perpendicular to two other vectors, you can just cross them, and that should work. And another fun fact, if two vectors have a dot product of zero, then they will be perpendicular or orthogonal. So uh, the dot product, uh, since we're not focusing on that in this video, so I'll just calculate it, but we can actually expect that this vector, negative 6, 4, 5, is perpendicular to u and perpendicular to v. But if they are perpendicular, or rather if their dot product, zero, they are going to be perpendicular, vice versa too. So we can just check that negative 6, 4, 5, dot 1, negative 1, 2, that should give me zero. So I'm dotting the cross product with this. If that's zero, then these are perpendicular. And negative 6, 4, 5, dotted with 2, 3, 0, my V, that should also be zero. So we'll just calculate it quickly here. 
negative 6 times 1 is negative 6, plus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, plus 5 times 2 is 10. So negative 6, and then the plus minus is minus 4, so negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10, plus 10 is 0. Cute. So that works. So our answer is perpendicular to Q. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12, plus 4 times 3 is 12, plus 5 times 0 is 0. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0, plus 0 is 0 indeed. That is so satisfying. <laughs> so our answer of negative 6, 4, and 5 is our cross product, and indeed we verified that it is perpendicular to U and perpendicular.